um, do y'all just network all the time just to have like, oh, well, I can grab a couple of things from here for an experience for someone, and oh, I can pull from here, and just, do you guys just know people and network so you can have those opportunities and say, oh, I sent this to you? 24-7. I mean, I like BCS, for example, or I could tell uh, when it was in Atlanta, it was in Atlanta last year, yeah. the championship game. So we did a sponsorship with the Falcons. So with that sponsorship, we had a big suite in there. So we hosted about 30 players to the game. Stuff like, I mean, relationships will go, will go a long, long way. Now, if you're talking about the players taking advantage of the casinos where they're getting something from here, then he goes next door, gets something from there. That's always going to be there. I mean, the, the thing about the Tunica market is it's small and all the casinos are close to each other. Where Vegas, I mean, if you're going to walk out of a casino, it's going to take you five, you know, 20 minutes to get to the other one walking. It doesn't. So once you get into Vegas, you're stuck. Plus, they have the amazing shows. I mean, not a lot of places you can go to Celine Dion or Jennifer Lopez or, you know, acting in front of you. And then you got the chefs where you see them all over the place. And it's like walking into a show. Gordon Ramsay at Caesar's Palace is not uh, by accident. He'll be on property. Uh, Gisa Boy is the same way. Guy Fieri. All these guys are always roaming around the, the place because they know that's their business. That's their bit of butter. They want to be seen. They want people to, oh my God, I'm going to Caesar's to see him. So it generate foot traffic, generate revenue. Where Tunica, you just, I mean, you come to the horseshoe, you walk out two seconds, you're at Gold So if you want to change luck or do all that stuff. Any more questions? Any other questions? Now I know you got a couple of uh, stories that you're got in your back pocket. But, uh, <laughs> got a lot of good ones. Uh, I mean, uh, one because he gave me the green light, so I can always tell that story. The guy gave me the green light; I can use it anytime. I got a lead on this kid from Miami, Florida. I say kid; he was 34 at the time. He calls me. I was like, "Hey, what would it take to bring you over here?" He said, you send me a private jet, and you give me 20000 in cash, walking in the door, I'll bring you $2 million. I was like, done, no problems. Great investment for me if he loses. If he wins, we got to reinvest next time. <laughs> but he comes in, the pilot takes a picture and sends it to me. He goes, are you sure we're picking up the right guy? I was like, yeah, why? Send me the picture. The dude got a Superman outfit, like literally. He's dressed up in a Superman outfit. Had a Louis Vuitton suitcase, handcuffed to his hand with twenty with two million dollar cash in it. He came to the casino floor, opened the suitcase, we put the money in front money, goes to place for the weekend. It was good for us. He went home. The, the biggest challenge that we have is a guy losing that kind of money, but going home happy and calling you the next week, thanking you for taking care of him, and I'm coming back to see you. Just get the concept of that one. Even at a small Let's talk about restaurant business. Say a guy came in and spent $500 on a, on a dinner bill, right? And then had a, had a bad service, but the manager kept on coming and checking on him and talk to him and everything. When that guy leaves, he'll call the manager, he goes, man, thank you for looking out after me. You know, I appreciate all the service stuff, but you took care of, we'll see you next time. It, it just, bringing him back somebody with bad experience is the biggest, hardest challenge for us or losing a lot of money to bring them back and lose more money. Um, another thing I was gonna do, like you just touched on it, um, like people who lose a lot of money, I, I don't, I just turned 21 last year. I'm not into the whole gambling thing as it was, <laughs> but um, how do you reconcile that? I'm having a good time, but I'm also like, wow, that's a lot of money I'm just losing. And I understand like, for me, a lot of money is going out for like, like a burger and fries. Yeah, not with you. But like, it's a different But see, it's, it's, it's all proportionate. Just like you say, it's all yeah. proportionate, right? So you got guys, first of all, we're not going to give anybody credit on something if we always do a background check, not a background check, we do a, a bank check on him. So we know how much money they have in their bank. So if I'm going to give you a million, you you have well more than a million in the bank. So I know if you lose it, you all normally get 30 to 60 days to pay it back. But... A lot of the people, the problem gets if they lose it here, then they go to another casino, open another same amount. Just, so that's where the responsible gaming, that's where the communication becomes very good in our company. Because if I got a guy that's stuck a couple of million, I'll call my Caesar's Palace in Las Vegas, like, hey, do me a favor, don't take his action right now till he pay us. Once he clears, 
then we're good to roll in. Because you, you never want to, one thing Benny has always said, you never want to slaughter a cow, you want to milk it. Because if you slaughter it, you don't get nothing after that but one time. When you're milking a cow, you're always going to get stuff from it. So you, you never want to kill a big whale. Like, that will be disastrous for us. Then I got to make my job 10 times harder because I got to find another one. And they don't grow on trees. <laughs> like they do not grow on trees. They, they're hard to find and they don't fall in your lap. Yeah. So when you make those relationships and they keep like coming back but they keep losing, is it harder to get them to come back when they like realize what your job is and realize that they're still losing but you still have those connections with them? They, they understand my job from the beginning because I mean it, it's, it's not just me going after them. There's about 30 people that do my job around the world. So they're going after we. Those big gamblers, it's a small niche, and everybody's after them. Like, once you get one name, pops up on your board, there's everybody going after them. Because everybody wants to come to your casino first. But the relationships take you way more than, and Tunica's hard to recruit to. Tunica's very, imagine Memphis under Tubby Smith going against Kentucky under Calipari. We won't get no players between those two, right? I mean, it's hard. Now, Penny and Mike stepped in, now, Cal is a little shaky. He doesn't know what he's going to get. It, it, recruiting, it all, it's all about the relationship between you and that player. Uh, when they trust you, they'll give you the world. But you do one thing and they lose your trust, it doesn't matter what you do from that point. They're never going to trust you again. You're, you might get some of their business, but you're not going to get what you would have got. Because these guys hang out with multi-millionaire as well that gambled with them. So you do not want that word to come out, oh no, he sucks. He'll tell you one thing, then he'll, he won't do it. So don't do business with him. So now you're losing their whole network. And that blows. <laughs> so I think to answer, also touch on that too, but like um, one of the things we have to do is have really genuine relationships with them people. It's not just come in, we want you to lose your money. So like for example, one of Romeo's biggest Asian customers, I have dinner with her almost every weekend and it's almost, she looks at me like her son. So it's not a relationship that she's a customer. She looks at it more like it's family. She comes in, we know she likes a certain type of cookies. We have her cookies waiting on her. We go to the steakhouse. I have the chef come out. The chef cooks something special for her. And I mean, she, she feels like it's more like family opposed to just me. She can come in and lose a couple hundred thousand, you know, today, but I had dinner with her last week, she lost a couple hundred thousand, and she was okay, like she was happy. She was just happy to sit down and have dinner, and how was your week, and just kind of talk. We don't even talk about the money. I'm like, I don't know anything about the casino. All I do is make sure your room is good. <laughs> That's Romeo. Oh, oh, like, oh, that was, I make sure you have no. a good meal and you eat. So it's about genuine relationships, and then they forget about that they're just, they're gambling. So it's capitalized on Andre's point, which is a great point. A lot of the players that we have live in cities that don't have casinos, right? So we make efforts to go into those cities, take them out to dinner in their hometown. What's your favorite restaurant in Charlotte? We'll take you out there. I'll buy your meal, whatever you want. You and all your friends, come on out. It's all me. It's not just the way you show them, I'm going there. There's no casino. So they know I'm not coming there to take their money. I'm going to treat them, keep that relationship building. And they're going to like, wow, he took care of us in our hometown. He's not just want us to come to the casino right. and lose. You know, we do other stuff. We do like a loyalty cruise that I do around the world. So it depends which part. Like last year we came out of uh, Barcelona, Spain. We went all over the Greek islands. They love it. It's an appreciation cruise for these guys that lost big money with you. But now you got them on 10 days on a cruise ship, seeing part of the world that they'll never go see again. And they love it. They're like, oh my God, we're appreciated. So now we're gonna come back and see you regardless. Oh, yeah. I had like, so, <clears throat> even though I know you all said that you all kind of focus on the big, the no. whales. And so no, we we got we, we focus on everybody. Everybody. Just, yes. just we just job. Yeah, my just my job was, uh, started off, but we do have a department that focuses on. We have somebody for every yeah. level, tier level player. So, what is like the what is the operate the operating cost to a, like a regular casino? How much? What do you mean operating costs? Like for a cost, you know what I'm saying? The revenue that the casino brings in or the rooms. You know what I'm saying? Like to manage the... To manage a casino? The, uh, oh, Lord. That's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> I, I don't have that on the top of my head. I mean... Yeah, it's, it's a lot because 
there's a lot that goes into it. There's so many aspects you have a hotel, and I know what that, that part is, but as far as all the casino and the labor that goes into it, the food cost, and because truly these places are like little cities. They have everything. So the one thing I love about this industry is you're not pigeonholed into like if you're major in accounting and you have to be an accountant and that's it. We have an accounting department in the hotel. We have marketing. We have entertainment that you do shows. We have hotel. We have food and beverage. We have what Romeo does. It's truly like a little you can do everything. With your degree, you'll be able to do anything. And there's hotels all over the world. And you don't have to just work in a hotel. You can work in a lot of different stuff. Yeah, each department manager, they got their own operations. And they manage their own money. So, I mean, just like Andre said, the hotel, he'll tell you exactly. On, on my end, I... I don't have a budget, <laughs> but like seriously, because as soon as you hear something, like you got to bring them in. It doesn't matter what it's going to cost me. I want to bring them in here. What are some tips or advice to give people in a casino when they come in? Like, what do you mean? Like, what? Advice for somebody that's gambling or yeah, for employees? For employees. Answer your phone 24-7. <laughs> that's my number one advice for anybody that want to move. It's, it's in any job. It's a, like a lot of people got this mentality of the eight to five job. It doesn't exist anymore with social media. Like eight to five, you can throw that out the window because everybody's on their phone these days. Even when they get off work, the, the worst thing you can do if somebody calls you and tell them, hey, call me tomorrow because I'm on my, way to work, on my way home. I'm done working for the day. Call me tomorrow. You tell me that, I'm calling somebody else that's willing to answer the phone right now. 